hi guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to another japa episode today i'm really excited because i have a dear friend of mine who you know we knew each other back in the days back in confucius we studied chinese together and i'm super excited to have her on the channel and i'm so grateful that she decided she agreed to come and talk to us today okay so i'm just going to let her introduce herself in a bit uh you guys already know how we go hi please hi hi <laughs> gloria okay hi. so i'm um, she's around patients in you and uh, i'm from abia state in nigeria i'm currently studying in france Oh nice nice hi patience <laughs> so, Good to have you on the channel thank you so much for being here Thank you for inviting me too Okay so like I start with the questions proper proper I just want to ask you a few icebreaker would you rather questions just to get to know you know what you would rather do So the first question is would you rather always speak your mind or never speak at all always speak my mind or never speak at all at all yeah so that means like when talking <laughs> like everything you're thinking will always be coming out and people will hear everything you have to say or never be able to speak at all i rather not speak <laughs> you know, sometimes when you say your mind <laughs> the other person cannot take your mind <laughs> the other person cannot take your mind avi so you run to depend on this oh like go mute forever no no for i think i think very often depends on the situation but uh if i feel it's something very formal i would i wouldn't i might not always see my mind but if something really informal come on mm. i'll give it to you Yeah this one is just like a game it's not like a real scenario now so it's just like yeah. if if it comes down to it would you rather you just like talking non stop so speak my mind please I'll speak right. my mind I'll speak my mind <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so the second one is would you rather um have the ability to go 10 years into the future or be able to go 10 years into the past future Future, right? future. <laughs> <laughs> future, the future right okay this is the future let's leave it there past first yeah In the future i think the future is better so come on let's get yeah, there let's this. get there yeah yeah i, I feel you who hmm. were in china before you went to france so how long were you in china uh i was in china that was three years for three years Okay, so three years. Yes. Twenty twenty nineteen to twenty twenty two. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, why you went past the COVID? <laughs> you said through the COVID and past the COVID. <laughs> COVID and past the COVID. Very accurate. <laughs> okay. So, what were you doing in China? Were you working? Were you studying? Okay in China I was a student in uh Zhejiang Hangzhou Okay yeah. so I was doing my MSc program in uh what was my course food science and technology <laughs> yes. food science and technology food 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 food, food. Okay okay great okay. okay so uh, what was your study experience like in China Hmm. study experience yeah i think uh for me it was sometimes it was good sometimes it was bad yeah because it was a bit difficult to i I first I'll, let me start with the the method of teaching i really mm. didn't find it so interesting maybe because they separated us you know they just made international students apart and maybe they didn't give as much attention that they would have given to to their students and yes yes mm -hmm. so that was that was like the first half of it and then cuz since it's scientific most of my things had to do with um experiments and like scientific research basically mm -hmm. and uh, you don't have the basics 
you, you don't really have someone that's going to be there to put you through every step of the every step of the thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. most of the things I had to just really read by myself online and see how to do it. But wh- one good thing with it is that okay, when you finally find okay, this is how I should do it, your your supervisor would always respond and and uh, make available whatever material you need to make sure you do your project. And so it's like a one man thing. Everybody on your own project, you you can It's not really collaborative. You can't. Um, your colleague cannot really help you. And then this. The Chinese you, people you mean your know? Chinese colleagues or other foreign international students? Uh, well, I think everybody was facing their different projects, so you you will not expect them to help you. But like yeah. in your lab, you have your lab community, so mm-hmm. at least your lab colleagues should be able to help you. Which, of course, they were busy with their own too, and most times, yeah, it was a bit difficult because you ask yeah. them some things and they say they don't know. Yeah, you just have to do your work by yourself. So it makes the work more strenuous. Yes, you have to do. You have to research on it and mm. do it by yourself. It makes it a little bit um, tough. Hectic. Okay, so uh, apart from the study, like teaching methods, um, like what? what okay, I, I know I talked about your study experience, but I also just like, want to have like a, a a feel or an idea of what your life was in China, what your living experience was like generally. Okay. It can be experience. <laughs> the living experience was quite good. It was uh, okay. it was quite interesting for me. Yes. Okay. So uh, everything was cheap and within your reach. <laughs> you have, you have everything you want within your reach. You don't have to go so far to to get to get a lot of things. Uh, although when the COVID came and then everything really got uh, cut down, yeah. So you can't go out again, and that really that really distorted a lot of things because yeah, we were hoping. Oh come on, this is a holiday. Let's mm. go. Let's go to another city. Let's go visit our friends. Mm. Let's organize like vacations or trips together and. That was impossible. Yeah, and the fact that it's extended, maybe depending on the school. My school was quite strict, so the fact that it's extended beyond even the twenty 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 one, and it was really tight. But generally, I think life experience. I met a lot of, I met wonderful people that we're still in touch till now. Yeah, most times we just had in house parties or in house fun. Mm. To help ourselves to ease up the whole stress. Yeah, and uh, I think that's basically just it. I think life was cool. Life was easy. Life was easy. <laughs> I, I I feel you honestly. Yeah. Uh, so uh, after your MSc, you decided to leave China, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, so I want to know why you decided to leave. Like, why did you make the decision to leave? Why didn't you get a job or do a PhD or just follow your life in China? Why did you decide, mm. oh, I'm done? Why did I decide to leave? Well, yeah. in the first instance, was was for me. Yeah, because as much as you are there, you need to think about what you want. And if you are getting exactly what you want, like you have to think about your goals. Yeah, like I always tell people that okay, China is a place. If you stay there, you you can just relax. You cannot, you can just relax and forget about what you really wanted to do mm-hmm. with yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, I I didn't want that to get to me, and so that was basically my intention to leave. And it's not just about leaving; it was also the program I was looking forward to to do. Yes, I wanted to major in plant pathology and as at then it was a bit difficult for me to move into that field mm. maybe because of my past uh, my background like my educational background so it was a bit uh, difficult because i had okay. done yes i had done several applications and uh, they, there was just much rejection mm. in china so Yes, in China. They wanted me to pursue, you know, from wood science, I have to go go over to, you know, something again in the wooding sector. And that wasn't my sector. I wanted to go to... Okay, so, 
what 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 background are you like what was your bsc background my bsc background is in plant science so okay. I, I i wanted yes so i wanted to major in plant health okay and uh yes doing the wood science was not so much related mm, related it's not, yes it's not a field that was too vast as such yeah and then trying to transition i kept on having you know courses related to engineering and all of that and, mm. Most and the course i got here was exactly what i was looking for so that was like the major <clears throat> the major decision for me was the major decision okay cool so you said you got the course you were looking for in, um, in france so obviously that's one of the reasons you moved there but now i just want to know what are some other reasons why you chose to move to france why why did you choose france mm -hmm. i think as at then different factors came into play because i wouldn't say i really got france as an option yes okay i got i got different other countries as an option but you know different mm -hmm. factors came into play and then france was like my best bet you know when it comes to money and lifestyle and where i could be really comfortable with so i think france was like my my best bet. okay uh, is, can you um brief us a bit on some of these factors some of the things that you considered yes i okay first was like finances you okay. know being able to afford your fees or being able to get a scholarship and all of that okay so and did you get a scholarship for your current uh, major um no i didn't okay but the fee okay yes. okay cool so and uh what again another factor i think was language okay so i was i'm proficient in french so it was a bit it oh. was going to be very convenient for me yeah i think that was the next factor. ah yeah. so yeah, so you speak I think, French. I think, I think, I think those are my yes, yes, yes. Okay. I think those are those are those are my two main um, factors for yes, making the choice of here. Okay. And, and the fact that France is also very good when it comes to agriculture. Um, the agricultural sector is uh, it's, it's wide, it's vast, it's, mm. it's advanced sort of. It's advanced. Sort of. Okay, so it's a very suitable place to study plant science. Perfectly. Okay. Yes. Amazing. It's just, it's just the language that most times discourages people from coming. Yeah. Well, to yeah. Europe, to Europe generally. Mm. My, my program is in English, yes, but, you know, you would want to Definitely. go out to people. And, Definitely. Um, so, uh, uh, I just want to ask you, I know we, you might not be able to relate a lot because you can speak the language, but what, what, what's life like for people who can't speak French, who move to France? Is, it, is this something that is still possible or is it a no-go area if you can't speak French? No, I, I wouldn't say it's a no-go area if you can't speak French. A lot of people speak English around the world. even. So you would, you would definitely meet people that can speak English everywhere you go to. So. Just like when we came to China and then you have to use a phone and you're doing the whole translation thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's a no go area. I have I have a lot of colleagues that don't hear French. Not just Nigerians, but even yeah. in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not it's not right. that so bad. But but the thing is when you want to really go into the system. The system. Yeah. Yes. When you want to really work when you when you want to well, very often now just put it as work so it, it becomes a factor like you need to know how to speak their language even if just a little bit mm. you can communicate with clients or customers or or the people that are also there in the company mm. I think I think it's very important and I agree with you that the language of a people is like the most fundamental thing to them. So if you want to be able to penetrate a particular society, you know, learn the culture, blend, you know, and as well as grow in the system, then learning the language is super important. Yes. So I think and although 
uh, although for some for some I would, I would i would say for some occupations you don't really need need all of that stress you know what we're talking right. about like i don't believe in the tech line <laughs> like this is in the tech line you don't even care if you can hear them or not just right. do my work for you yeah yeah the tech bros and texas <laughs> okay <laughs> cool Uh, so now, um, walk me through the process of, you know, applying for this school, um, getting the admission, uh, getting, uh, processing your visa and, you know, eventually moving there. Uh, hmm. I didn't really think about this question. <laughs> okay. What was the admission and visa process like? Okay, so for the application process, yes, uh, they have, they have, this general website where you can see almost all the programs that are in France. Okay. Maybe, maybe later I'll send you the link. You can just um, put it in your chat box. Oh, so so from, from, from that website, you can find um, a list of almost all the English programs and all the French programs that are here in France. So at first I saw my program online just like that. And it was, a, it was an international program. So I, I applied. I went through their portal. I, I, I communicated with them, you know, made sure that okay, this is this is exactly what they are what they are going to offer me. Mm. And then I did the application. That should be in January, between January and March. Mm. Then I got my offer letter. I think in April. Then, yeah. So after getting the offer letter, around was it July? Then I started the administrative um, procedures, you know, pay part of your school fees, register online. Most of the things were even, most of the things were online, so it was a bit easy. You register online and book book your visa interview dates. Mm. That after you have sent them, you know, you send them your passports and you send them all your documents. You get to book your your interview dates. I okay. think then I was I was in Changsha. So I booked Wuhan because it was very close, close to my city, like a one-hour drive. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I, I booked my visa interview in Wuhan. Then during the interview process, yes, they basically just ask you why you chose, why you chose the con, why you chose the country, why you chose the program. Mm-hmm. Then you provide them with the necessary documents which they've asked you to submit. You know. Yeah. Your phone, father, mother, details, your passport, all those shit. So I think after the interview, after the interview, mm-hmm. they are holding your passport, right? Then after they would send it to you. And that was it. I, I had got to it didn't take time. It was within two weeks or three weeks. Wow. Um, two weeks. I got my passport visa. back. Wow. The visa. Mm. Okay, so I want you you mailed your documents to them prior to the interview. Yes, I uploaded them. Okay, uploaded on the, them online. Okay. Yes, I uploaded them online. Mm-hmm. Then I I downloaded a a form. You know, with the whole uploads, you download a form that carries your interview dates. Yes, so that's the form you take to the um, visa office. Together mm. with those documents that you might have attached, although they they will just look at it there, not that they are doing much because they've seen everything online already. Mm, yeah. Okay. So, so you come with reference number and your interview. Okay. So do they like do they have something like proof of form that you have to show as one of those requirements? Yes, they do. Okay. Is yes, it- they do. Mm. Do you remember, like, around how much was their proof of fund? Mm, proof of fund, I think that was six, six, fifteen euros, six hundred and fifteen euros. Okay. For, is it ten months or one year? I think one year. Okay. One year. Six, fifteen times one year. Okay. Okay. So you have to show that amount of money in your bank account. Yes. Okay. So now I want to know how long have you been in France now? Uh, I've been here for about eight months. I came in October. Yes, so this is okay. June. I should make it eight months. Okay. So how has life been so far? 
for the past eight months in France? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good question. <laughs> Uh, wow, it's been very welcoming. Like it's it's a different feel altogether. Wow, it's a different feel altogether. It's I want to say freedom. Just need to little freedom. <laughs> Just want to get freedom. Well, I, I know you get me, but I, yes, I totally get you. <laughs> Coming then freedom. We know. Okay. We know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Although, although I won't say everything is as how do I put it? Yeah, it's yeah, not the not way we get in China. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. When it comes to transportation, oh, Ch I think China beats most countries when it comes to transportation. Mm. Like when when it's in the transportation sector, yeah, they have a very good strategy there in China. Yeah. Here it's not it's not so strategized, but mm. it's, it's good enough. Maybe where I'm staying, it's, it's good enough because I'm staying in Nice and it's a tourist tourist center. So most people come here for tourism. Basically. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's been, I, I think that's and it's one more one more reason why it's welcoming because they, they receive a lot of tourists every year. And so they see people from different parts of the oh, world. Yeah. So I, it's been... I understand mm -hmm. being welcoming because coming from China, where well, well, <laughs> so you know, the difference, I feel you, girl. Okay. So, but what about like your 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 major now? You're doing your major there, and you're doing the. I know you're doing the course you want, but what do you think as far the studying, like the schooling experience, like? Compared to China, do you feel like it's better for you and things like that? The teaching methods. Okay. Yes, the teaching methods and all of that is better. Although it's more, it's more rigid. It's more rigid. You get. It's more um, rigid. Rigid, yeah. Uh, rigid in the sense of sorry, should I say rigid or strict? Basically, in China, my program was we were the first. We were the first set for my program in my school so i would say maybe the teachers were still trying to get yeah get their hands on the ropes sort of thing mm -hmm. to understand how to manage us or handle us yeah and well here it's not the same thing it's a it's a recurrent program and i'll, I'll say they're teaching very well and they, they teach you a lot a lot of things like like you should know the whole world by the time you are done over <laughs> I think we are done with the program. Good. That's getting an education. Oh, this one, the school will pass through you. Like, the school <laughs> is really passing through me. Wow. Like, I bet, I bet you have time. Maybe, maybe because of my own course. Because some people just have classes three times a week. But my course is, like, daily. It's every day. Wow. Every day is filled with um, a lot of management. Right. It's like they want to give you everything that they know. Yes. For so, I mean everyday classes for MSc, that's quite a lot. Okay, so now I want to ask you, right? Do you ever miss China? Like do you yeah, do you ever miss this country? And if you do, why? What are some things that you miss about China? And if you don't, also let us know. Well, uh like I said, life is easy. Who doesn't like like an easy life, right? No, right. So sometimes yes, I, I do miss China. Maybe when it comes to ordering takeout or buying my things online, you know, mm. or moving, moving from one place to another. Yes. Maybe I could just have a bicycle to take me, even if it means down the street. You see? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's easy to operate. Or maybe, maybe because I've not really stayed so long. But but I think I still think um, when it comes to transportation, I don't really like the system here. It's not mm. it's not so it's not so easy. Yeah, not so easy mm. as I would have thought it there. So sometimes maybe I need to go somewhere, and I'm thinking, ah, oh, don't tell me I have to take the tram again, or don't tell me I have to take the bus. You mm. see, when maybe I could take a taxi that is cheap, take mm. me to where I'm going to. Yeah. But for here, taxis are a bit expensive. 
okay in france yes it's a, it's a bit it's quite expensive anyway it's not a bit expensive it's quite expensive mm. to and it's not it's not it's not everywhere you can find a taxi there are some there are some places you might be living and the taxi cannot come all the way yeah there. i was staying somewhere like my former residence so it was a bit difficult to get taxis mm. so some of those things and buying like buying things online you know a lot of machinery <laughs> a lot of machinery to use to, yeah. to do all what you want it to do in your room mm. yeah. so yes yeah, sometimes i miss china and i miss my friends there yeah i miss a lot of my friends there because i because i'm on the group chat and i'm just reading and i'm and i feel like ah this my people <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we still talk but i do really miss the whole company to them okay Um, patience thank you so much so just to wrap up this video i would like to ask you is there any advice that you would give to someone who is looking to relocate from china to france or even other countries of the world or anything that you think any mistake or any regrets in hindsight is there anything that you regret about moving to france anything that you could have done better and things like that Okay, I think basically my advice would be that uh, you should really research about the country you're going to. Check check especially when it comes to your field what do they have as opportunities for you after mm-hmm. there. Yes. And uh and uh one other thing is uh try to plan ahead. Try to plan ahead of time. Yeah, try to plan ahead of time so that you can gather what you need to travel along with. Yes. What other advice can I give? Yes, if you if, if you know you're not on a scholarship, make sure you have the money. If you don't have the money, just rest. <laughs> just, <laughs> just rest. Yeah. Mm. I would have said language but but most European countries you need to know their language to mm. some extent. Yes. You need to you need to know their language if you want to really be a part of their system. Mm. Yeah. Do you think it would be easier for a non-French speaker to learn French uh, when they move to France? Is it easy to learn? Mm. <laughs> I wanted to answer your question with another question. Yeah, it's okay. Because, <laughs> I can make it clearer. Because I don't know if it was easier for a non-Chinese speaker to learn Chinese. Yeah. It seems, it seems like our Mandarin, everything went down even when we got there. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't even as sharp as when we were back <laughs> at home. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like maybe for book, sometimes you forget like vocabularies because you just use like the, the ones you use in communication and you see if you're not studying your hsk vocabulary you might forget some big words so i think yeah some point but i think um, when it comes to like communication actually understanding even their local dialects like being in china kind of improves that aspect okay okay mm. well for, for here I, i would say you have to what, what was your question i would say you have to learn You, you have to learn the language yeah I'm, i'm saying is it easy to learn like do you the people always speak french to you when you go out like when you okay. go to something as people always speak in french and things like that oh, oh, oh. yes it is yes it, it's it's a bit easier to learn it's okay. it's much easier to learn because i've had let me say i know one or two people that have been able to pick up the language like almost everybody is speaking it yeah and uh, and, and And they are very polite, like they're very polite people. So right. you'd always hear them say something. Yes, maybe thank you or welcome or mm-hmm. hi. You, they must just say something to you. To, like when they come in to salute you, like hello. Mm. If they're going bye, au revoir, you hear everything. <laughs> okay. So since you're talking about language, can you just say something to us in French? Let me just... <laughs> in French. Hi, my name is Patience. Nice to meet you. <laughs> my <laughs> learn some French. Okay, hey, bon, bon, bonjour, bien salut, je m'appelle Patience et bon, je viens de Nigeria et je suis je suis très ravie d'être sur ton sur ton channel avec toi. Merci beaucoup de m'avoir invité. Gloria. 
Nice. So I'm saying I'm, I'm happy to be on your channel and okay. thanks for inviting me. Okay. So how do I say you're welcome? Yeah, do here. Do here. Okay. Do here. Yes. Do here. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so like, this is this is just like French corner for this video, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that yeah. we have for you to like that's all the questions we have for you today. Once again, okay. once, thank you so much for you know talking you. to us, or spending time with us on this channel. We appreciate you so so much. Thank you, and we wish sure. you all the best for your stay in France. We hope that you know your experiences will get better and better. And yeah, we hope to talk to you some other time. <laughs> all right, <laughs> we'll be glad to have you back. <laughs> thank you so so much, and thank all you right. as well for watching. Uh, if you watched up to this point of the video, you already know what to do. Please give it a thumbs up. It's really important to you guys. And subscribe to the channel. Like, patient is already pointing it out. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, please. Super, super important. Help us grow this channel. We're trying to get to 2,000 subscribers. And if you are, if you can make that happen, if you partner with us to make that happen, we'll be so grateful and god will bless you for us okay because god blesses all our subscribers in case you didn't <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you guys so so much i'll see you in the next one bye right. bye <laughs>